hello and welcome again to cyber ben channel today is going to be an interesting day because i will be discussing cyber security giving you an insight into what it is we're also going to touch on what digital assets are what is sensitive information what is classified as sensitive information we're also going to discuss um, reasons why you should be concerned about cybersecurity and also what you should do next. So hang tight and let's begin. Permit me, I'm going to be looking at my device because I have made some notes and I want to ensure that I am... Um, you know going according to my my study notes in order to give you accurate information so before we start off defining what cyber security is you would have had also heard of the term information security and you're wondering okay what's the difference between information security and cyber security there's no significant difference, but then information security is the protection of information. How we secure information. Information could be data, documents, anything data. And to do this, we consider three components, which are confidentiality, integrity, and availability of this information. If any one of these three has been breached, then the, in, the data is no more secured. I'm going to give you an example to let you understand what the CIA trial is. So we talk of confidentiality. Uh, if I store an information on my computer and it's meant to be seen by me alone, I believe that that is confidential to me if someone else has access to that data it no longer becomes confidential and then we talk about integrity let's also refer back to the document that I have saved on my computer and I have saved for example ABC inside that document and I have saved it on my desktop if someone else goes into my computer and alters this information, they have therefore breached the integrity of that information. It can no longer be seen as a unique document because it has been altered. And then we talk about availability. Like I mentioned, I have stored this information on my desktop and I go back to my desktop and I cannot find my document. Where could my document have gone to? I didn't delete it. Okay, maybe I share access with a family member and they could have deleted it. But why? What if they're not the ones who deleted it? What if someone had access, unauthorized access to my system and deleted this information? This is where cybersecurity comes in, where we protect and defend our digital systems in order to prevent cyber attacks that can hinder on the CIA of our information. I hope you got that clear. I'm going to repeat this. I said, this is where cyber security comes in, where we protect and defend our digital systems, which in this case, my laptop, where I have stored my information to prevent cyber attack. All of those incidents that I described in the past or events that I described in the past could have been done by a malicious user through various means. So cybersecurity comes in, puts in measures to prevent such events from occurring. 
this way we are able to maintain the confidentiality integrity and availability of our information so like i mentioned earlier cybersecurity is the practice of protecting and defending digital systems applications as well as sensitive information from cyber attacks you may be wondering what are digital systems my mobile device is a digital system your laptop wi-fi router in your house in an organization, we begin to talk about databases, desktops. We're in the era where everyone works from home. So we're all giving like a laptop to allow us connect to your organization's resources from your house. Those are digital systems. Then we have our emails. We have Google, Yahoo, who provides us a platform to access our emails. These are digital systems. We also have our social media profile, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok. All of these are digital systems. You are able to access the front end, which is the page where you log in. However, there are databases there are servers behind all of this infrastructure, which are digital systems. Do you ever wonder what happens if you wake up one morning and all your nice pictures on Instagram are gone? What are you going to do? Have you thought about ways you could, you know, save your pictures just in case? I always think about this, especially people who have businesses running on Instagram. What happens when Instagram is attacked? That the availability of the platform is hindered. What will these business owners do? They have a customer database of, they have a database of customers phone numbers, emails, what happens when they are not able to access all of this information. So let us begin to think of, you know, ways we can have our information stored somewhere else. And when we do that, let us be concerned about the security of this. Okay, moving forward, I'm gonna now discuss the various types of attacks. I'm just going to name a few because there's so many cyber attacks out there, but the most prevalent ones are social engineering and in social engineering, we have phishing, smishing, we have whaling, business email compromise, they call it BEC compromise, excuse me, we have whaling all under social engineering. Number two, we have malware. On the malware, we begin to see things like virus, worms, ransomware. All of this are malware. But they all do different things. They, they act different ways on our systems. And then we have the insider threat. A malicious user who works in an organization with the intent to steal sensitive information why for money or because they have been treated poorly we all react differently in that case we refer to these individuals as insider threats and then we begin to discuss sensitive information now uh, bank accounts number we have bvn we have um Yes, the debit card number, the long card number, the CVV expiry date. These are information that allows you to transact online. You have your passwords to your laptop, your phone, what you, the passwords to your social media profiles, the, the password to your Wi-Fi at home, your router. And then we begin to see things like live locations, social security numbers or any government id 
that is used to identify you as an individual. And now I'm, I come to the reason why you should be concerned about cybersecurity. First, this is because your identity can be stolen. You remember I mentioned the different types of sensitive information, your government ID, your passport number. These are things that identify you as you. You can become a victim of a phishing scam. In another video, I'm gonna teach you about phishing. I'm gonna show you how to identify a phishing email and what to do when you receive a phishing email. You can be a victim of financial fraud because of an act that you took you clicked on a link, you were quick to provide your information to an unknown user, you forgot to confirm and verify who this individual is before making available your information. Or you must have heard you would get 20,000 naira, you would get 50,000 naira, or even as low as 5,000 naira, and you submit your information. We get phone calls. Oh, you, you've been invited to an interview, but you're, you need to pay the sum of 20,000 Naira for us to, you know, finish up with your application. I know these are desperate times, but we need to verify information before we take action. We do really need to. I can imagine what financial fraud would cost to the mental state of an individual. If you lose a lot of money, you become destabilized. You, your attitude changes. How you respond to situation changes. So before you take action, before you invest in a business, before you, you know, send that money, before you respond to that text message, before you give your information on a phone call, you do not know who is on the other end. Oh, okay. What did you say your name is again? This is how I would respond. What did you say your name is again? Okay. Can I get your phone number? I will give you a call back. I just want to you know, verify some, some data on my end and I will give you a call back. And then when the person begins to resist and, you know, there's an urgency, oh, we just do it, then you begin to see issues with that phone call. So we need to be more vigilant. What do I do now? And like I mentioned before, we've been, you need, we need to be cyber smart and vigilant we need to always be quick to verify why i'm doing this who is on the who is this who sent me this email do i know you am i expecting an email from you or your company what is this link in this email if i clicked on it where does it take me how do i know if this link is not going to download something malicious on my system and make my documents disappear. Like I mentioned in the beginning, stop clicking on links you have no business with. If someone sends you an email, you're not expecting that email. There's a link in it. There's a, you know, a sense of urgency asking you to click on this link and claim Claim this money, claim that $50 Amazon voucher. Do not be quick to click on the link. Like I mentioned, you want to verify the information before you take action. If the email looks like it's coming from someone you know, why don't you pick up the phone call and, oh, hi, hello, Mr. Johnson. 
because I just received an email from you asking me to provide A, B and C. Can you please confirm if this originated from your company? And they tell you no. But if you're expecting that email and you're sure, okay, this is the correct sender, john at abc.com, not john at abc underscore, some funny, funny things in there dot com. We would get sufficient emails. However, for now, you want to be vigilant. And then we get to using strong passwords. We should be able to use strong passwords across our social media platforms, our banking apps, our mobile devices. What, like I said, whatever digital systems that we have access to or that people access. Let us begin to think of putting a, a form of authentication to it. Okay, and then when choosing your password, choose a strong password. Choose a strong password. Stop using your last born's name. Stop using your middle child's name alone, even if you wanted to use their name as your password. You should be able to add other characters. You can separate the name. You can add a character in between. Underscore this. Underscore full stop at this. You make it difficult for an automated system to generate possible passwords that can crack your password or cre recreate your password. Don't make it guessable. I guess that's the word. Do not make your password guessable. Make it difficult. You know, if I come into your laptop now, if you, if I, even if I know you and I know what you might use as your password, make it difficult for me to guess what it is. Make it difficult for a stranger to guess your password. This way we begin to put barriers into our digital systems where we have sensitive information stored. Adding to passwords, there's the new term now known as two-factor authentication. It's an extra layer of security. Okay, if I log into my, my internet banking now, even if I've entered my password, it's gonna ask me, um, it's gonna, I'm gonna get a, an OTP, a one-time password sent to my mobile device you know, to ensure that I'm the one who's trying to access this platform or profile. And then obviously if it's me, I have my mobile device, I, it's my phone number, you send me the code, I, and I give it back to the system and it says, oh, okay, it's you, you're coming. The door is open. So imagine you had set, set a, a very simple password and you did not enable two-factor authentication and I just entered the password and I have access to all your information. I can delete, download, make changes, alter things. You know, this is where confidentiality, integrity and availability comes in. Your, your files, your documents, whatever, whatever platform I have accessed, it's no longer confidential. The integrity has been breached. So let us make it difficult for these cyber attacks in trying to get into our systems. Change the default password that comes with your Wi-Fi router. I feel like this is also important. We have our routers installed in our homes, in our offices with a default password. It could be a very simple password that the um, technician could have made up, you know, just to set you up. And he says, okay, this is your password. Or he even uses your name or your company name. Okay, company XYZ123. And you stick to that password for years. That is not good. We need to 
ask the technician, oh, I, I want to change this password. What are the steps I can take? Every router or modem you buy today, you are entitled to an account profile. You can change the password of your router. This also makes it difficult for many people connecting to what you have. So you can even set up a policy. Oh, we will change our, you know, Wi-Fi password every three months because we have vendors coming in and doing work for us. However, we want to ensure that when next they come in in the future, they don't just have access to our network. Their system could have been infected with malware or a malicious program and they come into your system they still have access to your wi-fi you give them the link to that place where you store sensitive documents they log in you know with things going on in their system because you're not you don't have control of their laptop or whatever device they bring in so you want to put in small measures you know little the little things matter I'm going too deep into this, but I'm gonna, you know, come back here a little bit. And if we're mobile devices, let's try to set passwords, passcode, the pattern, face ID, um, you know, whatever security mechanism that you have available on your device, I think you should ex explore it. And then again, I, I have here, it says, always ask yourself, what is the risk if I do this or that online? What is the risk? Everything we do, there is a risk attached to it. If I do this, if I take this immediate action, what is the risk? Am I putting my organization at risk? If I keep using my company email to sign up to everything I see online, what is the risk? If I click on this link, what is the risk? And to every risk, there is a value attached to it. That's why you see many companies they conduct risk analysis. Or oh, what happens today if there is a flood and we are unable to function? How much do we lose? How fast can we recover? All of these risks are analyzed in the different areas of the business. Not to talk of you as an individual, your personal information. What is the risk? Let us begin to assess our risk. Ask yourself, what is the risk for the actions that I take online? Until then, I want you to digest all we have learned today. If you have questions, please drop them in the comment section. I could have missed addressing some parts. I can't go deep into it. I want it to be as simple as possible. I'm not going to go technical because I'm building a community that I want to understand the importance of security, the basic things that we can do to be secured online. I'm not gonna make this journey complex. I will share resources for you to go in depth, but my duty is to keep it simple, okay? I'm not here to confuse each other. Ask me questions, drop a comment. If you need me to clarify things that I've said here, if you feel like I have not said it the right way, please drop your comment. Let, let other people learn from you. Until then, thank you for listening. I hope I have made an impact um, to you today. I hope I have changed your thought process.
process about how you access, store your personal information. So thank you for listening.